Hey guys, alright, um, this is a quick tutorial um, which I'm going to run you through basically the process on how to um, do tutorial videos, um, things like music uh, tutorial videos and sound tutorial videos inside of DAW, you know, a digital audio workstation like Cubase or FL Studio or uh, Ableton or whatever and actually be able to hear the music um, that you're making and your voice at the same time while you're doing the screen capture video. Um, it's 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 a problem for Windows users, Mac users. Uh, it, it's a, it's a they've got another process they can do that sorts them out. But for Windows users, um, whenever we're using Camtasia or any other screen capture program like that, um, yeah, it'll record the internal audio of the system, like things like Windows notification sounds or email sounds, and it'll record. Um, uh, like if you're playing music on your Windows Media Player, but it won't record your digital audio workstation uh, music, the, the music you're making while you're doing your tutorial or whatever it is that you're doing. So I know that's been a lot of, uh, it's been a big problem. It was a problem for me. So I went ahead and researched and found this way to do it. And I'm going to quickly share it with you. And I'll try to get through it as quickly as possible. Um, so bear with me. All right. Um, the the key ingredient to get this going is a free um s uh, free piece of software that I found it's um it's by VB Audio Software it's called Voice Meter with two e's um this uh this URL over here is quite a, a crazy long URL so what I'll do is I'll post that in the description of the video but besides that um you know uh Otherwise, you can just search voice meter with two E's, you'll find it. And basically, you can download it for free on their website. You just click download now, and it just immediately starts downloading. There's no sign up to newsletters or spam, or um, it's 100% free, and it doesn't come with any uh, malware or bloatware or any kind of crazy stuff like that. It's it's actually by some good guys. They they do ask for donations if you want to donate, but you, you obviously don't have to. So if you don't have the cash or whatever, that's also okay. Um, so basically, once you get it, um, you install it. It's simple, like every other uh, application installation. You just double click on the executable file, and it uh, talks you through the process where you want to install it and everything, and it does that. And um, as soon as it's installed, it'll ask you for a restart. And that's basically to explain what the software does. It basically and, and why you need a restart. The software basically creates sort of like a fake or a ghost type um, audio device on your system which basically roots um, your original sound card audio with your um, input audio which is your you know your your audio interface and basically you know and by, by the way this sounds complicated but basically we all have this if you're making music and things like that we all we all have the equipment you don't need some fancy sound card or fancy, fancy interface you, you will all have this ability. It just sounds fancy, but it really isn't. Um, basically, um, it roots those two pieces of audio together, and and that's why it can and uh, and then puts it into ASIO, which is the problem. Is why we can't do this is because of that doesn't usually happen. Um, so this just roots it for you and then solves the problem. So that's why you need to restart your machine so that it can read the new device like any normal device. It would need to restart. All right. So that's a, a long-winded explanation. Sorry about that. Um, so your machine restarts and then from there you want to open up your DAW I'm using Ableton but you know you can go to preferences um, in any of your um, DAWs Cubase or whatever it's very easy to find it's in your options uh, often it's in an options tab mine's there and then preferences you can if you don't know just search on YouTube or Google and someone will have a place to show you how to find your options or your preferences in um, in Cubase or FL or any of those all right, for it's in the audio section of your um, preferences. Ableton's got them in tabs, but it's in the audio section. Now I can't change this now to show you, but basically, this is usually um, it's usually uh, it's selected as my sound card as the audio device because that's where I, I record in, I record record out uh, and playback from. Uh, but in this case, like I say, this is a very special piece of software where so we're routing to them, Voice Meter Virtual Asia. We're routing to them. And then they're going to do the reading from that that point. But that's not important. What's important is that you do select them, voice meter, as your audio device. Um, in uh, in other programs, it's the same thing. You'll have to always have a device selected, and it's always usually going to be your um, your what you call it, your interface. 
So in this case, don't. This would be my interface, but choose voice meter. All right. And ASIO is the type of uh, driver type, but again, don't worry about that. Once you select it in your doll, it'll often select it for you. It did for me, and it does for as far as I know. I used to be a QBS user and stuff. It'll it'll know the driver type. All right, so I've got that set up like that. Um, then what you want to do is go ahead and uh, find uh, the program that you installed, installed. It'll be in your start bar if you put it there, and open it up. Okay, I've got mine set up, and that's how I'm doing this recording now. But basically, I'm going to show you it's only one or two steps. This is actually the, the software yeah, that you downloaded and installed. It's um, very good looking, and it looks complicated, but it actually isn't. Okay, so you go to this little drop down one over here, which was, is your hardware input. Now, you want it to be, um, the, it's your sound card, but, uh, sorry, your interface. Your So mine's a, a Steinberg UR22 interface. You could have a a focus right one of those red um, interfaces or you know the presonus the blue ones you know whatever you've got you know just your interface and um, and you want to choose that um, I've, I've tested it with all of these and it works but this case seemed to work the best I felt like there was this I don't know I wouldn't say a delay but it just it didn't sound so nice in my headphones perfectly um, but they all work actually, to be honest, almost exactly the same. They all sound very good. Um, but if you've got this KS, it'll, it'll be your name of your card here, not mine. But select that if you can. If not, by the way, guys, it's really easy. If it doesn't work for you and you've and you've set it up just like I have, just go ahead and select. There's not a lot of options. Even if there are a few more, just go ahead and select. It's not so hard to quickly test which one does work for you. You you'll know it as soon as you've uh, recorded a video and and you know just record a little 10 second video and just test and things like that but don't worry there's not there's never too many options and if you follow these instructions it should work um, the next thing you want to go to you can ignore all this the next thing you want to go to is this A1 yeah and um, in this case you want to select um, your your the line the WDM line uh, and in this case it's my sound card again it'll be yours um, I, as far as I know, this KS works again, and the MME works again. Um, so you can choose whichever you like in that case, and it will work. Um, just obviously, just do a little quick test and see which one you feel is the best. At, you know, but they do work. All the ASIO stuff down here and things that won't work. That doesn't work at all. You're reading it in the wrong way then. But um, one of these MME or WDM that'll work, and it'll have your sound card name. And then in this over here you want to go ahead and select um, the original output of your original sound card not the one that you use um, not your interface so not in this case not my Steinberg interface the original sound card that you actually have on your machine now don't worry if you're thinking oh I don't have two sound cards you always do um, if you've got an interface that you are using to record with your microphone and uh, that sort of thing and also even a USB microphone or one of those devices it'll read as an interface so you always have that one and then you have the original one that came with the laptop or computer that you windows computer that you bought and um if you don't know what its name is because you see uh, mine is called real tech um, digital output if you don't know what its name is what you can do is you can go to con i think i've got one open an instance you can go to control panel and um, you can go to sound here and manage audio devices and you can check what the name of your original sound card was they might have two or three outputs depending on how cool your sound card was that came with your machine usually sometimes you can get an optical option out but that's what it, whatever that it, you know it's up to you if uh, you're using optical art or whatever um, but that's not important the one you want obviously is your main output from your original sound card so mine's the real tech um, excuse the noise there's a helicopter going over but Anyways, um, so mine's called Realtek. Yours will be called something else um, if it's not, um, you know, the same kind of machine as mine. And and then you obviously know which uh, which one to select here, what the name is and everything like that. Oh, and by the way, just an added note about these: um, if these are grayed out, if they are like grayed out and look sort of more like this, like I don't know, kind of grayed out that means they're not enabled and that's all you have to do is double click on it and you go over yet and if it's saying don't use this device make sure you're selecting use this device um, and you can do that you know it works for every one of these kind of options you can just say enable 
if it's not enabled. That's just in case yours is isn't you've disabled it for some reason. You don't really have to worry. It doesn't cause any problems or like uh, backlash for for having more than one enabled. It's it'll work fine. Yeah, and that's pretty much it. So, but as I say, guys, don't stress if it doesn't work um, off the bat. Um, if you choose one and you're like, oh man, you know, okay, this one's always going to be your sound card out. That's that's easy, your original sound card on your machine. But something like this, if if WDM or whatever, and what yours is called slightly different, just choose a different one. I guarantee I went through like two, two or three of them, and I was like, oh wait, there we go, that works perfectly. Um, yeah, so give that a try. Oh, and of course, you want to just quickly hear how it works. There we go. There's the sound of the song playing. It's something I'm working on. And uh, and my voice at the same time. And they sound, yeah, they sound great. Uh, just one more thing. And if, if you want to mix it slightly, like, this program actually helps you do that. This um, virtual part of, yeah, the virtual input, as you see, I can bring it down. And it sort of treats it like some it's almost like a mixer where so if you're doing a tutorial, you want everybody to be able to hear you. So something like maybe something like this. But you can still hear the, the beat in the background and yeah, there we go. So um it works hundred percent guys. Well good luck with everything and I uh, hope this has helped out.